This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some important updates to share with you. The government is going to shut down by Friday. If the Democrats and Republicans don't come to the decision, I'll let you know what's going on with that. Bernie Sanders calls out Kirsten Sinema as well as other Democrats and what needs to be done in the country in order to help the most struggling people. I'll play you that video clip. Also, there's $800 checks going out by the end of December and $1,200 check applications are closing in just a few days. I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a more than Monday Monday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more daily straight to the point updates on matters that financially matter to you. All right, so Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, predicts that much lower inflation by the end of 2023 and sees risk of recession. So some people are saying that inflation has peaked. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said yesterday uh, that a significant reduction in inflation by the end of 2023. So the end of 2023 is a year away, while also noting the continued risk of recession. She said this, I believe by the end of the year, you will see much lower inflation if there's not an unanticipated shock. Uh, so, I mean, it's not really much to look forward to, saying I'm very hopeful that the labor market will remain quite healthy so that people can feel good about their finances and their personal economic situation. So when it comes to this news, I mean, it sort of makes sense. You know, the end of 2023, inflation will go down if a recession, uh, I guess, wraps up as well in 2023. But also, Janet Yellen is the same person who predicted that inflation is transitory, as well as the whole Biden administration said that as well. So i uh, not sure what to think about that. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you believe her, not believe her? And then Congress faces looming government shutdown deadline at the end of the week. So Friday at midnight, uh, there is a deadline when the government funding is set to expire and the House and Senate will likely pass a short-term ex extension to avert a shutdown at the end of the week, which would give negotiators more time to try and secure broader full year funding deals. So basically what they're trying to do is have a stopgap measure to kick the can down the road a little further. So the big question is how long, because what the Republicans want is since they're gonna have a new majority in the House, they want to deal with it as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Democrats want to delay it as much as possible uh, so that the Republicans don't have control. It's all about a power struggle, it seems like, in Congress. Uh, so the House has already approved the measure. Uh, so once the Senate votes to pass it, the bill can go to the president, uh, you know, or uh, sorry, that's for the National Defense, the NDAA. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, funding the government, $26 billion apart, top Republican says. So basically, when it comes to numbers, the Democrats want to provide more uh, than $26 billion here. So it seems like it's just that time of the year again where the funding for the government has already been delayed because the original deadline was September 30th and they're just gonna keep kicking the can down the road until I guess things are really important. They don't wanna delay it until Christmas because all the Congress members wanna be home for Christmas. Uh, is this what the American people deserve, especially from members of Congress making $173,000 per year salary? Is this how they should handle things? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. When it comes to Bernie Sanders, Sanders slams cinema as corporate Democrat legislative saboteur after Arizona Senator leaves Democratic Party. So yeah, people still in the Democratic Party are hurt that uh, Kristen Sinema left, not really so much because of her, but more her seat at the Democratic table and passing things. I don't think the Democrats really care too much about her, but Bernie Sanders has a lot to say, as well as the government shutdown, as well as what needs to be done for the country. Take a look at what Bernie Sanders has to say. So, you know, I think everyone should make their own decisions about where they fit or where they don't fit. Um, I'm going to keep doing exactly what I do, which is just stay focused on the work, you know, and ignore all the noise. Here with me now is somebody who knows a thing or two about going his own way, independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Senator, uh, first, you are an independent. She is now the third official independent of the U.S. Senate, uh, joining you and Angus King of Maine. What do you think of her decision and also what you just heard in her interview with Jake? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, on Senator Sinema. She has her reasons. Uh, Donna, I happen to suspect that it's probably a lot to do 
uh, with politics back in Arizona, I think. Uh, the Democrats there are not all that enthusiastic about somebody who helps sabotage some of the most important legislation that protects the interests uh, of working families and voting rights and, and so forth. So I think it really has to do with her uh, political aspirations uh, for the future in Arizona. But for us, I think nothing much has changed in terms of the functioning of the U.S. Senate. The good news is that we now have uh, 51 votes. We'll have a majority on committees. It means that we can go forward and start protecting the interests of working families and deal with the reality that we are increasingly living in an oligarchy uh, where the billionaire class and large corporations uh, control almost every aspect Sam. of our country. So I would hope very much that with this new majority, Democrats will sit down and start fighting for the needs of ordinary Americans. So I want to talk about some of those issues in a second. But first, you, know, you were a very important figure on the campaign trail for progressives ahead of the midterms, as you normally are. I'm sure you're going to be campaigning for candidates in 2024. The outgoing Arizona Democratic Party official, uh, one of them says that he expects Democrats will run their own candidate against her. Is that a good idea? Would you support a Democratic opponent against Senator Sinema? I, I don't. I, I support progressive candidates all over this country, people who have the guts to take on powerful special interests. I don't know what's going to be happening in Arizona. We'll see who they nominate, but certainly that's something I will take a hard look at. Does she have the guts to take on powerful special interests? No, she doesn't. She is a corporate Democrat uh, who has, in fact, along with Senator Manchin, sabotaged enormously important legislation. I want to talk about a major deadline to fund the government, and that is Friday. There's still no deal. Would you support another short-term extension instead of a larger bill to fund the government? And how worried are you about the government shutting well, short term, down? Short-term extensions are just a temporary solution mm -hmm. to the ongoing crisis we face. Uh, clearly, what I worry about is Republican efforts uh, to hold hostage next year, if we don't get an omnibus bill passed, uh, to hold, uh, hold hostage uh, the, the government uh, in order to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and that I will vigorously oppose. You got a lot of seniors out there who are not making it on Social Security today. A lot of working people have, who are re approaching retirement who have nothing in the bank. Uh, I don't want to see Social Security or Medicare cut. I will oppose that vigorously. You know, while I have you, uh, you've been in Congress a, a long time, the House before the Senate. There certainly have been some notable bipartisan pieces of legislation that have passed and been signed into law. But arguably, funding the government is up there, maybe even the top responsibility of, of you and your fellow members of Congress. Why does this keep happening? Well, I think it's happening right now uh, because Republicans see it as an opportunity uh, to hold us hostage and get demands that under normal circumstances uh, they would not. Look, they have uh, not been shy about making it clear. Uh, they want to cut Social Security. They want to cut Medicaid. They want to cut Medicaid. And what they're saying is, hey, we are prepared to allow the United States government to default on our payments, bring the entire world perhaps into an economic crisis Senator, I was... unless you give us yeah, uh, what I, you want. I hear what you're saying about the, the differences right now, but over the past many years, Democrats and Republicans in charge, funding the right. government has just not happened. And we've been at this crisis point at the end of, uh, at the, end of the year so, so many times. But I want to move on to some, uh, a couple more issues that I know that you care about. One is uh, the record-breaking $858 billion defense funding bill. Uh, the House passed that this week. The Senate is going to uh, vote on it. You voted against the NDAA, the defense bill, last time around. Will you do so again? Yes, I think I will. Look, we have, uh, we have 85 million Americans who have no health insurance. We have 600,000 people who are homeless. Uh, we have a dysfunctional health care system, dysfunctional child care system where working parents are paying $15,000 a year on average for child care. Uh, we have got to start protecting the needs of working families. The Pentagon is the one major agency of government which has never been independently audited. There is massive waste and fraud uh, and cost overruns within that agency. So I think we can have the strong defense that we need without spending the huge amount of money that we're currently spending 
uh, on the military. What are your thoughts on Bernie Sanders? Do you agree, disagree? Uh, so when it comes to stimulus, stimulus update, direct payments of $800 will be sent out in South Carolina by December 31st. So as I mentioned, I already got this uh, maybe a week or two ago, which was a really big surprise. So if you live in South Carolina, uh, take a look at your uh, mailbox because I got my $800 check, which is pretty cool if you qualify for that. And then uh, here we have Americans have four days left to apply for $1,200 monthly direct payments. Who qualifies and exact steps to apply? So this is going on in San Francisco, California. It is the guaranteed income for transgender people. Uh, also known as GIFT, which is giving out $1,200 monthly payments for 18 months. So if you qualify for that, looks like the deadline is on December 15th uh, for yeah those $1,200 monthly payments. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Bell's tip of the day, and what I want to tell you is always stay happy. Always be glad for your family, because your family is the ones who made you and, and made you. So, everybody, hope you have a good July 4th. Bye! Now? Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. Uh, all is good here. Um, yeah, just, you know, doing all the Christmas stuff. Still got to get that tree up. Haven't been able to do it with my foot. Uh, but uh, anyways, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. If you want to check out any of my other videos on my other channels, uh, for example, if you want to check out Bella's latest video on her YouTube channel, you could click right up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.